There really are very few things that are better than a cool, crisp spring morning, honestly. With everything in flower, it just smells great. You know, it's really awesome. So, welcome back to another episode. Uh, today, there's so many things that are flowering, that are in bloom, that I'm honestly extremely excited about, that I can't wait to show you. Uh, one of those things, in predominantly, is uh, my red fleshed apples. All three of them are flowering. Uh, one of them is just doing way better than all the other other two, though, in far as far as flowering goes, because it is just absolutely covered in flowers. And um, it's only its second year. I'm definitely not gonna let all the apples sit on there. A lot of them will have to be thinned. You know, which what we do with apples, anyways. But it's extremely exciting to see, and I can't wait to show you. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it and show you the first one. So here's the first one. This is my uh, Calypso variety, which is one of the more vigorous ones that I have. And just look at all the flowers. So many on here. It's only its second year. This is gonna be way more apples than uh, I'm gonna allow to fruit. I'm definitely going to take you know, all these clusters, probably take them down to about, you know, one apple per bunch. So you let them fruit and uh, take out the bad ones, essentially the ones that have maybe scab on it or maybe a bug got to them or something like that. And that's about it, really. I will also be taking a Q-tip, just a regular Q-tip. and. Um, rubbing the pollen all over it and going in between all three apple trees to just help pollinate all of these flowers just in case the bees don't get to them I'm not really sure just wanna increase my odds of success here but there's so many on here this is absolutely awesome so so many and I do contribute a lot of that to my soil I am um, started from just a mostly organic matter base make sure you have that biochar in there and it all essentially at some point turns into worm castings there are worms everywhere in here eating up all the organic matter so all that really ends up being left is the worm castings and the biochar so that's really all it is it's not very simple i did fertilize pretty heavily uh, maybe every third or fourth uh, water, watering, I would add a little bit of fish emulsion, just a little bit, just to make sure that the nutrients are high because of the, basically the charge of the biochar, because I don't think I had enough time to charge the biochar since I got these trees kind of earlier than I thought I would. I got them in uh, January. I think I ordered them in December, so I wasn't quite ready to plant them yet. And uh, so it, well, the biochar wasn't charged yet. Which is fine. I, uh, that means you just have to apply a lot more fertilizer just to help charge it up. And it worked out very well, as you can see. Now, I do like to uh, plant strawberries at the base here. And all of them are flowering. So this right here is a uh, pineberry. Pineberries are the white strawberries that are supposedly that taste like uh, pineapple. But we'll see. I'll do a taste test about that because I'm sure if I believe it. This is a quenault, also starting to bud out very nicely, got a little spider friend there, very beneficial. You can just see all the flower buds in there, another pine berry, so has a flower head in there. Same thing in this one, it's starting to flower. This is a quenault which I'm sure will start up really soon as well. Might even already be flower buds, like a flower head that's starting to form in there. But for now, let's just focus on growing on growing back first, but I'm sure a flower here really soon. Let's go on to the next apple tree. So here is my Odisso apple. It's another red fleshed apple as well. I only have red fleshed apples currently, other than the ones that I grew from the seed. You can see those are coming out real nice. I'll be taking the pollen from this one by just gently rubbing this Q-tip on the flower, getting the pollen all over it, 
and then just taking that pollen and going to the other apple that I just showed you. It's going to all the blossoms, just rubbing the pollen all over it. That's really all there is to it. But you can see there's some clusters there. There's another cluster right in there. All along the main trunk, all apple blossoms. It's great. So it's also flowering very well, also being in its second year. And again, same story. Got, already got some flowers in there. These are pine berries coming out in flower. It's awesome to see. They just do so well. More strawberries. This is the all star that I ended up pulling up. So I'm probably pulling this one out. I'm gonna replace it with more pine berries. And here's my last red fleshed apple here. It's the uh, era variety. Which also has a couple flower clusters on there. Another one back there. So this one's flowering the least, but that's okay. It's again, also in its second year and it's still flowering. Still very happy with that. It's taking a little longer to wake up as well, so might still uh, do some more. And again, same story. Bunch of strawberries at the base here. These are pine berries again. Lots and lots of pine berries. Some more flower clusters in there. Got some more in there. Strawberries everywhere. More right there. This is my uh, Quinault. You can see this one also has flower buds in there as well. So that's great. And then more from the last videos. This is the multi grafted pear. It's coming out in leaf. And one variety, the red Bartlett, decided to uh, flower as well. Which is alright. These guys will also pollinate the apples. So I'm just going to leave it for what it is. Oop. That wasp wants something that I got. I ended up getting greedy and trying to bend this red Bartlett, that, trying to bend it back a little bit more, which ended up cracking right at the seam here. So I bandaged it up and that should heal it back. No problem. It didn't snap off all the way. And obviously it's still coming out of leaf. So as this grows, this will heal and then I can take that off. It's very easy to do. And one of these days I might make a video about it to show you exactly how I do it. It's really easy. All you do is just wrap plastic strips around this as tightly as you can to hold the moisture in. Another exciting tree for me is this fig which looks like it has a little figlet right at the base there this is an itty bitty one I've never had a fresh fig before so that'll be very exciting to try and it also has strawberries at the base, base as well this is the quinault which is just doing amazing you see it's starting to push out flower buds. That's what that is right there. Same thing with this one. This is a pine berry. Also starting to push out flowers. And then I got another small one in there. This right here is my Meyer lemon. You can see some flower buds in there as well. Just little itty bitty ones starting to form, starting to wake up. Not really wake up, they didn't really go dormant in the first place, but it's starting to grow and produce flowers. The lemons that I already had are getting bigger. The lemon tree grown from seed, not flowering yet this year. These are the jalapenos that I just took outside, so they look haggard right now, but they'll come back to life in no, in no time and look really amazing. This is some of the new growth already. Has little flower buds on it forming. It's doing really, really well. 
I ended up taking a couple branches out that were cluttering up the center. Like in here, that was a branch that I really didn't need, so I took it out. If you uh, remember from the last video. But yeah, doing really well. Back here, I've also got some roses. All that reddish growth is all new growth, so it's waking up real well. And it's starting to put on little flower buds in there. You see it there? Same thing in here. There's a little flower bud. Little flower bud right there. Back down here. Up here, it's starting to form one. So yeah. Roses are pretty. Not as great for pollinators. A lot of the time, pollinators have a hard time getting to the pollen. And, and I believe they don't have nectar, so they only have pollen. So it's not completely well-rounded for a bee, for instance. But they are very pretty. Got another flower bud out there. Now it's time to go to the backyard and show you what else I got growing on. These are just little tulips that were already planted. Those are all going off at this point. But they were pretty. Off to the backyard. Here are all the Osterberry cuttings that I took. And a lot of them are flowering. <laughs> I really um, will end up having to take off all these flowers, unfortunately, but I can let them flower for now and let them do their thing. I just can't let them set fruit. This is a red currant that I'm not exactly sure what the variety is, but it's just putting on so many flowers. So this will, all every one of these little flowers is gonna be low current. So I have lots of red currants from this one. Just, just a shame that I don't know what it is. So I also have another current that I do know what it is. This is my red lake. Also little flowers there. So we'll have some currants from that one. It just doesn't flower quite as much. But it is doing very, very well. I ended up noticing that a beetle or something, some of a grub ended up digging into the, uh, the trunk of this guy. Because I've seen the, the fuzz and everything. So it left part of this kind of, kind of hollowed. But it came back okay, so. Can't really see it, but. Some in the tips by the buds and everything, but it came back fine, so it wasn't a problem. And again, strawberries everywhere many, many strawberries doing excellent, waking up very well. These are going to be very, very prolific. The wind ended up taking off one of my Yastaberry branches over here. I guess uh, nature decided that I don't need it. Ended up potting it up. So we'll see if that survives. That's the new growth that's on there. Just keeping it watered and uh, keeping it out of the sun for the most part. This is the morning sun, so it doesn't get sun for the rest of the day. Here is a uh, white currant. Variety is called Blanca. Also, many, many flowers. So, we'll get many white currants as well, which I haven't actually had before ever, but supposedly they're better for fresh eating. And then, here's my big Yostaberry. Look at all the flowers, man. Oh, well, hi, kitty. <laughs> so many flowers in here. They're just everywhere. So many Yasta berries. Last year I got a couple. Uh, most of them ended up falling off. So this year is its, I've had it for two and a half years. I bought it in the middle of summer last year. So this year will be its full growing season, full production. And we'll see uh, how many currents we get. But it should be quite a few. It's just loaded in flowers. I'm very excited for this guy. A couple that I had were uh, quite delicious last year. So, pretty excited to get a proper taste here. Look at this blueberry that, we, that I planted in one of the other videos. Man, oh man. Look at all the flowers. Some of them are just starting to come out. See the little 
bell-shaped flowers that blueberries get. They're pretty interesting. All the clusters, they're everywhere. So we should get a pretty good, uh, pretty good crop of blueberries here. Here's the pink lemonade blueberry. It's uh, a little bit behind, but you can see, well, behind this blueberry here, as far as flowering goes. But you can see they're starting to come out. They're forming. We're gonna have lots of uh, pink blueberries as well. It's very exciting. And these guys will be able to uh, cross pollinate each other. So that'll be great. And again, of course, more strawberries to make a great ground cover. You know, they are ground cover, protects the soil from drying out. And it's a great way of getting another crop. Like these will cover the soil completely by the time we're further into the growing season. It's gonna really help shade out the soil, prevent evaporation. These guys like it pretty moist anyway. It's a uh, moist soil, so this will be great. And here's the blackberry. Got all the new growth, the new stems that are coming out, which I'll be uh, propping up against this trellis once they get a little bit longer. But you can also see the flower buds, they're starting to come in. Bees go absolutely crazy for blackberries and raspberries as well. But look at all the seed heads, not the seed heads, all the flower heads. So many. Going to be drowning in blackberries. Next is our raspberry. Lots of little blooms starting to form. Raspberries always do very well here. And again, the bees just love these things. They're always swarming with bees, wanting a little taste of that raspberry nectar. You can see a bunch of new little, little raspberries popping up everywhere, which will be uh, Autumn's crop. This particular variety is called Heritage. It's a red raspberry. Sure, conventional red raspberry, I guess. Lots of... Uh, New raspberry plants here. Here's another awesome variety of raspberry. This is called the fall gold. The yellow to orangey raspberries. That I did a tasting on. And you can see. It's got little buds all over it. It's going to be awesome. It's already looking like it's going to set lots and lots of fruit. We got a bunch of new raspberries coming in the base here. So over the course of the year, this will spread and fill out the pot just like it did in my heritage over here. So yeah, very exciting. I've got one last thing to show you. Look at the beautiful tulip coming in. Very pretty. And now look at all those rosemary flowers. How awesome is that? covered in these beautiful little orchid-like flowers which makes me think that these were these are probably pollinated by hummingbirds maybe but just covered in flowers last year it flowered a little bit but this year it's just just covered in flowers really awesome quite stunning if you ask me very exciting also, my green onions are flowering. I always let them flower because uh, the bees just absolutely love these flowers. So, you know, you can still eat the leaves just like you would at any normal green onion. Now, this, like I said, this is a green onion. So, but the flowers just benefit the pollinators very, very much. So, and they were also coming up from the roots. So, we don't even have to uh, plant any more of them. It's pretty awesome. All right, so I also have another full pot of strawberries. It doesn't have a shrub in it yet, uh, which will have a shrub in it at some point, but that has just strawberry flowers and just strawberries popping up everywhere as well. 
I also planted the All Star that's on the side behind you here that's also starting to flower. There are more All Star strawberries underneath this Japanese maple that's out here, which the Japanese maple itself is also flowering, which always causes a bunch of bees and things to just swarm that thing to so attract a bunch of pollinators. And uh, yeah, so everything is just flowering. And I, I mean, that means that we get stuff like the fruit and everything. It's, it's going to be very exciting. So I appreciate that you guys all came along and I hope to see you in the next one. So, tot de volgende keer.